Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video on our channel Immortal News. Today, we'll be presenting a list of famous celebrities who have passed away, with announcements of their passing made in the last 24 hours. As always, we have special tributes in our Today's Top Headline section. Before we proceed, we kindly ask for your support by giving this video a thumbs up. Let's begin. Thank you. Number 8. Renowned for revolutionizing the wuxia film genre, Chung Pei Pei, celebrated as the Queen of Swords, was a trailblazer in the cinematic world. Her performances in Come Drink With Me and Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon showcased her exceptional martial arts skills and pioneering role as one of the first female action stars, setting a high standard for the industry. Chung Pei Pei was born on December 4, 1946 in Shanghai, China. After moving to Hong Kong, she quickly rose to fame with Shaw Brothers Studio, becoming a central figure in the evolution of martial arts cinema. Her striking portrayal of strong female characters, blended with a graceful dance background, enabled her to perform complex fight scenes that captivated audiences worldwide. Throughout her career, Chung appeared in over 20 films for Shaw Brothers, including notable titles like Golden Swallow and Princess Iron Fan. Her role as Jade Fox in the international hit Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon brought her acclaim in Hollywood, exemplifying her versatility and depth as an actress. Off-screen, Chung was devoted to her family, finding joy in the success and aspirations of her children and grandchildren. Despite her illness, a neurodegenerative condition known as cortico-basal degeneration, she faced life with formidable strength and dignity, choosing to keep her struggles private while focusing on her loved ones. Chung Pei Pei passed away peacefully at the age of 78, surrounded by her family in her home. Her legacy endures not only through her groundbreaking films, but also through her contributions to the portrayal of women in action cinema. She is survived by her loving family, who remember her as both a cinematic icon and a nurturing matriarch. Tributes to Cheng Pei Pei. Number 7. Renowned for her vibrant soul singing and memorable theatrical performances, Ella Mitchell left an everlasting mark in the realms of music and acting. Known affectionately for her portrayal of Hattie Mae Pierce, or Big Mama, in the film Big Mama's House, and as the formidable Eveline in the Broadway revival of The Wiz, Mitchell's dynamic presence captivated audiences across multiple generations. Born on September 14, 1935 in Ahoskie, North Carolina, Mitchell's journey into the arts led her to become an iconic figure in both gospel music and theater. Her career took flight with roles in films such as Lord Shango in 1975 and on stages including a significant tenure with the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater. Her portrayal of Eveline during The Wiz's 1984 Broadway revival, later reprised in its 1992 tour, showcased her versatile talent and deep connection to her roots in musical theater. Beyond the stage and screen, Mitchell was a key member of the Gospel All-Stars and the Bradford Singers, further highlighting her musical versatility. Her commitment to the arts was also evident in her participation in significant cultural events, like the Peace, Health and Prosperity concert at Madison Square Garden in 2000, aligning with the United Nations Millennium Summit. Ella Mitchell passed away in New York City at the age of 88. Her legacy as a pioneering spirit in the entertainment industry combined with her dedication to her family and faith, continues to inspire those who knew her and admired her work. Tributes to Ella Mitchell. Number 6. Celebrated for her warmth and kindness, 
Christina Sandera was more than just the companion of famed actor and director Clint Eastwood. She was a cherished figure in her own right within the community of Carmel-by-the-Sea, California. Known for her gentle spirit and caring nature, Sandera's presence was a fixture alongside Eastwood during some of the most significant moments of his recent career. Sandera met Eastwood while working as a hostess at his Mission Ranch Hotel and Restaurant, and their relationship began in 2014. Over the next decade, she became a familiar face on the red carpets of major award ceremonies including the Academy Awards for American Sniper and premieres for films like Sully, The Mule, The 15 to 17 to Paris, and Richard Jewell. Throughout her life, Sandera was deeply integrated into the community of Carmel where she resided. Her involvement in local activities and her unassuming support of Eastwood's work, especially during his tenure as the mayor of Carmel and beyond, highlighted her commitment to both her partner and her community. Christina Sandera passed away at the age of 61, the details of her passing were kept private, respecting the family's wishes for discretion. Clint Eastwood described her as a lovely, caring woman who will be profoundly missed, a sentiment echoed by all who knew her. Tributes to Christina Sandera. Number 5. Renowned for his pivotal role in the American folk music revival and his pioneering presence in the Greenwich Village music scene of the 1960s, Happy Trom's influence extended across decades of musical innovation. His collaborations spanned a who's who of folk and popular music, including seminal recordings with Bob Dylan and contributions to landmark albums that shaped the genre. Happy Trom was born on May 9, 1938, in the Bronx, New York City. To a family of German-Jewish and English-Dutch heritage, his early exposure to a diverse cultural background influenced his eclectic musical style. Trom's career took off in the bustling folk scene of the late 1950s, where he first captured public attention. He achieved early fame with his performance on the 1962 album Broadside Ballads Vol. 1, where he appeared alongside icons like Bob Dylan and Pete Seeger. This album included the first recorded version of Blowin' in the Wind, and marked a significant moment in folk music history. Trom's collaboration with Dylan continued through the years, notably on Dylan's Greatest Hits Volume 2 and the anthology The Bootleg Series Volume 10, Another Self-Portrait, 1969-1971. Beyond his performances, Trom was also dedicated to music education, founding Homespun Music Instruction, which became a vital resource for aspiring musicians worldwide. His commitment to the craft of music and his ability to teach and inspire others was a hallmark of his career. Happy Trom passed away at the age of 86. His death marks the end of an era but also cements his legacy as a cornerstone of American folk music. His work remains a testament to the power of music to inspire and transform communities. Tributes to Happy Trom. Number 4. Celebrated as one of the greatest spotters in motorsport, Bob Jeffrey was renowned for his pivotal role as the eye in the sky, guiding racing legends across NASCAR, IndyCar, and IMSA to championship victories. His strategic vision led Tony Stewart and Dale Jarrett to notable triumphs, embedding him deeply within the fabric of professional racing. Bob Jeffrey was born on May 9, 1957 in Daytona Beach, Florida, a fitting origin for a man who would spend his life in the heart of auto racing. Over the years, Jeffrey became indispensable on the racetrack, 
bringing a unique blend of keen observation and quick decision-making that ensured the safety and success of many drivers. Starting his career as a mechanic and tire changer, Jeffrey transitioned to spotting, where his talents truly shone. He was instrumental in Dale Jarrett's 1999 NASCAR Cup Series victory and Tony Stewart's 2011 championship win, showcasing his ability to keep calm and provide precise guidance amidst the high-speed chaos of racing. Beyond the track, Jeffrey was a beloved figure known for his infectious laugh and generous spirit. His colleagues and friends remember him as a supportive and fun-loving individual who brought light and laughter into their lives. Sadly, Bob Jeffrey passed away after a valiant battle with cancer. He was 67 years old. His legacy continues to resonate within the motorsport community, where his strategic insights and warm personality left an everlasting mark. In his memory, the Aero McLaren team adorned their cars with special decals during the Toronto race weekend, and Pato Award, a driver deeply influenced by Jeffrey, honored him with a tribute on his helmet. Tributes to Bob Jeffrey. Number three, a titan in the field of behavioral neurology, Kenneth Heilman was renowned for pioneering advancements that shaped modern understanding of human cognition and neurological disorders. His profound contributions have left a significant imprint on both academic and clinical neurology, helping countless individuals through his insights into cognitive functioning and disorders. Kenneth Heilman was born on June 2, 1938, in Brooklyn, New York. After excelling at the University of Virginia School of Medicine, he embarked on a career that would see him at the forefront of neurology and neuropsychology. His journey included vital roles during the Vietnam War and pivotal research at Harvard Medical School, setting the stage for decades of influential work. Dr. Heilman's career was distinguished by his tenure at the University of Florida, where he held the James E. Rooks Jr. Professorship in Neurology. His work at the North Florida South Georgia Veterans Administration Hospital marked significant strides in treating and understanding neurological diseases, particularly those affecting veterans. Throughout his life, Dr. Heilman was a prolific scholar. His research contributed over 670 articles to peer-reviewed journals and led to significant breakthroughs in understanding spatial neglect and the neurology of creativity. His work was continuously supported by major institutions like the NIH and VA, underscoring his role as a leading figure in neurology. His personal life was as rich as his professional one, characterized by a profound dedication to his family and an unyielding enthusiasm for educating future generations of doctors and researchers. His legacy in the academic community is immortalized through his extensive publication record and the numerous neurologists and neuropsychologists he mentored who now lead their fields. Kenneth Heilman passed away at the age of 86, after a life filled with remarkable achievements and contributions to the world of medicine. His work continues to influence the study and treatment of neurological disorders worldwide, ensuring his legacy will endure through the countless lives he touched. Tributes to Kenneth Heilman. Number two, a master of satire whose sharp wit shaped the comedic contours of American pop culture, Bob Booker leaves behind a legacy adorned with laughter and historical significance. His seminal work, The First Family, not only mocked political life with charm but also set records in the entertainment industry, selling 7.5 million copies and capturing a Grammy for Album of the Year. Bob Booker was born on August 1, 1931, in Jacksonville, Florida. He embarked on a remarkable journey in media that spanned over 75 years, traversing the realms of radio, television, and film, 
and solidifying his role as a pivotal figure in comedic production. His ventures in radio during the late 1950s laid the groundwork for a career that would later influence major comedic works on both the small and big screens. Bob's career trajectory took a monumental leap with The First Family, which humorously depicted the life of President John F. Kennedy, echoing a nation's affection for their leader while providing a comic relief during tumultuous times. Following the success of this album, Bob continued to create and produce content that resonated with audiences, including the cult film The Finks and the syndicated sitcom Out of This World, showcasing his versatility and innovative spirit in various entertainment forms. Outside of his professional life, Bob was a dedicated family man, cherished by his wife of 55 years, Barbara Noonan, whom he met on a blind date and married in a spontaneous ceremony at Caesar's Palace. His commitment to family and creativity remained unwavering until his last days. Bob Booker passed away at the age of 92, in California, from heart failure. His passing marks the end of an era but also heralds the enduring influence of his work which continues to inspire laughter and joy. Tributes to Bob Booker. What's trending on the internet? News 1. Nguyen Phu Trong, the long-standing general secretary of Vietnam's Communist Party and a seminal figure in the country's political landscape, died at the age of 80. His passing was reported on Friday in Hanoi due to old age and an unspecified serious illness. Trong's health had been a subject of speculation since he missed key meetings earlier in the year with official confirmation coming just a day before his death when responsibilities were transferred to President Talam. During his unprecedented three terms as party chief, Trong was a dominant force in Vietnam's government, propelling a major anti-corruption initiative known as the Blazing Furnace, which sought to purify the ranks within one of the world's few remaining communist dictatorships. His campaign led to significant changes in the business environment and governance, though it also instilled fear and slowed decision-making among officials. Trong's policies and leadership style significantly shaped Vietnam's economic and geopolitical stance, maintaining a delicate balance of power between the United States and China. His approach, often described as bamboo diplomacy, helped elevate Vietnam on the world stage, enhancing its strategic importance to major global powers. His death marks the end of an era and leaves a vacuum in Vietnam's leadership, with no clear successor to continue his legacy. Trong's tenure will be remembered for its significant impact on Vietnam's development and its role in international relations, highlighting his complex legacy of stringent governance tempered by strategic diplomacy. News 2. Kevin Gosper, an iconic figure in Australian sports and a seminal figure in the Olympic movement, has died at the age of 90. Gosper, who claimed a silver medal at the 1956 Melbourne Olympics as part of Australia's 4x400 meters relay team, passed away after a brief illness. Over the decades, he became one of Australia's most influential sports administrators, contributing significantly to the nation's sporting landscape and its international reputation. Gosper's roles extended beyond athletic achievements. He was pivotal in bringing the 2000 Sydney Olympics to fruition, a moment immortalized by the IOC president's declaration of the Games as the best ever. His leadership extended into various sectors, including a successful corporate career culminating in executive positions at Shell Australia and its Asia-Pacific operations. His commitment to the Olympic cause never wavered, even as he held positions on the boards of major companies. Awarded the Officer of the Order of Australia in 1986, Gosper's legacy includes his tenure as an IOC member since 1977, where he served as Vice President and was a key figure in major Olympic decisions. His death marks the end of an era in sports governance, with his impact resonating at the impending Paris Olympics where many will mourn the loss of a global sports giant. News 3, Blythe Danner, the acclaimed actress and mother of Gwyneth Paltrow, was swiftly taken by ambulance from a charity event in the Hamptons, yet representatives reassure she is completely fine. 
The incident occurred at the Springs Food Pantry's EAT in the Hidden Gardens 2024 event at the Corbett Estate in East Hampton, New York. Early into the event, after a brief medical check where her vitals were taken, the 81-year-old actress was transported from the scene. Despite the alarming sight, a source close to the event commented, It didn't look that bad, but they took her away anyway. Following the scare, a representative from Paltrow's company Goop confirmed that Danner is in stable condition, echoing sentiments from Danner's personal representative that she is absolutely okay. This reassurance comes amidst a backdrop of Danner's celebrated career in film and theater, including roles in iconic films and her poignant battle with adenoid cystic carcinoma, from which she has since recovered. The incident highlights her resilience and the swift response of event officials ensuring her health and safety. News 4. Abner Haynes, a pivotal figure in American Football League history and a beloved Kansas City Chiefs star, has died at age 86. Known for his explosive plays and strategic acumen on the field, Haynes was not just a football player but a trailblazer in the sports community. Starting his career with the Dallas Texans, who later became the Kansas City Chiefs, Haynes quickly made a name for himself. In 1960, he earned the distinction of being the first AFL Player of the Year. His remarkable performance included leading the league in rushing yards, touchdown runs, and total touches, setting a high bar for those who followed. His most notable season was in 1962, when the Chiefs clinched their first championship. Haynes's contributions were crucial, tallying over 1,000 rushing yards and scoring multiple touchdowns, including pivotal plays in the championship game itself. Beyond his athletic prowess, Haynes was respected for his leadership and community involvement. His legacy extends beyond the playing field, remembered as much for his character and contributions to community and sport. The football world mourns his passing, reflecting on a man who was not only a phenomenal athlete, but a true gentleman and leader. His story remains a guiding light for future generations in the sport. News 5. In a heart-wrenching incident at a live performance, Brazilian rock singer Ares Sasaki tragically died after being electrocuted during a concert at a hotel in Salinopolis. The accident occurred when a fan, soaked from rain, embraced the 35-year-old singer on stage, causing a fatal electrical shock due to the wet clothing's contact with nearby power cables. The event has left the music community and fans in mourning, prompting an investigation by Brazil's civil police into the circumstances surrounding the tragedy. The Solar Hotel, where the gig was held, expressed its commitment to supporting Sasaki's family and cooperating with authorities to clarify the details of the incident. Harry Sasaki was celebrated in Brazil's rock scene for his dynamic performances and enduring stage presence, often delighting fans with marathon shows filled with encores. Friends and colleagues, including fellow singer Adriano Freitas and comedian Nato Almeida, remembered him as a charismatic and kind-hearted individual deeply loved by both friends and fans. Sasaki's passing is a profound loss to the music world, and he leaves behind his wife Mariana, to whom he had been married for just 11 months. New 6. The entertainment world is remembering Bob Newhart, the beloved deadpan comic and star of two iconic sitcoms, who passed away at his Los Angeles home at the age of 94. Friends and colleagues from the industry have come forward to honor his memory, sharing personal anecdotes and heartfelt tributes. Chuck Lorre, the co-creator of The Big Bang Theory, where Newhart famously portrayed Professor Proton, reflected on the joy of working with him. For years I begged Bob to appear on one of my shows. He always said no until he fell in love with The Big Bang Theory, Lorre shared. He added, Bob wanted his character to have a meaningful arc and he hoped to win an Emmy. We accomplished both. To work with him was an honor, and to call him a friend was my great fortune. Bill Prady, also a co-creator of the show, expressed his admiration on social media, highlighting Newhart's profound impact on comedians and writers. Meanwhile, cast members like Mayim Bialik and Will Wheaton shared their personal experiences, underscoring the profound influence Newhart had on their careers and lives. Newhart's portrayal of Professor Proton brought him several Emmy nominations, winning in 2013, and his role was celebrated not just for its humor but for its endearing quality that resonated with fans across generations. As tributes continue to emerge, it's clear that Bob Newhart's legacy will live on through his contributions to television and comedy, and through the many lives he touched both on and off the screen. Number 1. An emblematic figure in the world of Ecuadorian music, 
Frisia Saavedra garnered widespread admiration and recognition as a seminal pasillo singer and songwriter, profoundly shaping the musical landscape of her nation. Her contributions have been immortalized through UNESCO's recognition of pasillo singing as part of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity. Born Frazia Raquel Saavedra Gomez on September 8, 1933, in Guayaquil, Ecuador, she was introduced to the world of music at a young age by her father, a skilled violinist. Her talent was evident early on, leading to her first radio performances at the tender age of five. Frisia's life was deeply intertwined with music, a passion that was reflected in her long and illustrious career. Frisia's influence extended beyond her performances. She was a prolific composer with numerous beloved songs, including the iconic El Ladron. Her collaborations were legendary, notably recording with Julio Jaramillo, and her music played a pivotal role during electoral campaigns in Ecuador, with compositions dedicated to various political figures. Her dedication to preserving and teaching Pasillo earned her a revered place in the hearts of many, highlighted by her work at the Escuela del Pasillo at the Julio Jaramillo Music Museum. Even in her 80s, Frasia continued to perform and was celebrated for her contributions to Ecuadorian culture, receiving numerous accolades, including a prestigious medal from Ecuador's Ministry of Culture. Frasia Saavedra passed away in Guayaquil, succumbing to complications from kidney and liver failure at the age of 90. Her legacy as the Queen of Pasillo remains a beacon for aspiring musicians and a testament to her profound impact on the cultural heritage of Ecuador. Tributes to Frasia Saavedra. A luminous presence in European cinema, Yvonne Furneaux enchanted audiences with her roles in landmark films from iconic directors, 